In this video, we're going to learn how to use the BMP-180 Barometric Pressure Sensor with the Arduino. Barometric pressure sensors are standard equipment in professional and DIY weather stations. Barometric pressure is another term for atmospheric pressure. Atmospheric pressure is a natural force that can be used to predict weather and even measure altitude. In the next video, we'll see how to use the BMP-180 to measure altitude. But in this video, we'll find out what atmospheric pressure is, then look at a sketch that prints the pressure and temperature measurements to the serial monitor. The BMP-180 sensor I'm going to use is a breakout board from Adafruit. The sensor itself is a BMP-180 made by Bosch. The BMP-180 has five pins. It communicates with the Arduino over I2C. So it has SDA and SCL pins. Here's the ground pin. And this is the VCC pin. It says three volts, but this breakout has a voltage regulator and an I2C level shifter. So you can connect it to five volts too. This pin adjusts the operating voltage of the sensor, so it can be used in low voltage projects. The BMP-180 is a piezo-resistive sensor. Piezo-resistive sensors are a type of transducer, where a physical force causes a change in resistance of the sensor element. In the BMP-180, that forces air pressure. The BMP-180 can measure any form of air pressure, like the pressure inside a sealed container but it's mainly used to measure barometric pressure. Barometric pressure is caused by the weight of the atmosphere pressing down on the Earth's surface. Imagine a one inch by one inch column of air from the surface of the Earth to the top of the atmosphere. All gases have mass, including the air in the atmosphere. And due to gravity, this mass of air exerts a pressure on the Earth's surface. At the Earth's surface, this 1 inch by 1 inch column of air weighs 14.7 pounds. A common unit of pressure measurement is the atmosphere, or ATM. One ATM is defined as 14.7 pounds per square inch. The SI unit of pressure is the pascal, but one pascal is very small. It's about the pressure that a single piece of paper exerts on a tabletop. So for more practical usage, we usually use the hectopascal, which equals 100 pascals. The BMP-180 outputs pressure readings in hectopascals, but you can convert it to any other unit of pressure. The BMP-180 also measures temperature. Since temperature affects the density of gases like air, it also affects the pressure exerted by that mass of air. Colder temperatures cause air to become more dense, so it weighs more and exerts more pressure. Warmer temperatures make the air less dense, so it weighs less and exerts less pressure. We can use the temperature measurements to make the pressure readings more accurate. Actually, this will be done by the library we're going to use. Atmospheric pressure also changes with altitude. If you're up in the mountains, there's less air above you and less air mass to create pressure. If you're at sea level, there's more air above you, which creates more atmospheric pressure. We'll look at altitude effects on atmospheric pressure in the next video. But for now, let's look at something else that can influence atmospheric pressure. The weather. For hundreds of years, barometers have been used to predict the weather. Usually a rising barometric pressure means that warm sunny weather is coming. A falling barometric pressure usually means that cool, windy, or rainy weather is coming. A falling barometric pressure is caused by a mass of air rising from the Earth's surface. The vacuum created by the rising air mass forms a low pressure area on the surface. 
as the air mass gets higher in altitude, it cools down and compresses. This condenses water vapor in the air, forming rain clouds. It usually brings wind too, because the surrounding air on the surface flows into the low pressure area. A rising barometric pressure is caused by a mass of air in the upper atmosphere falling to the earth. The weight of the falling mass presses down on the surface, increasing the air pressure below it. The air mass gets warmer and expands as it gets closer to the surface. This warm, expanding air is usually low in humidity, which prevents cloud formations. Rising barometric pressures usually indicate that warm, sunny weather is coming. Okay, now let's set up the BMP-180 on the Arduino and take some measurements. The BMP-180 uses I2C to communicate with the Arduino. The Arduino Uno has the SDA pin at analog pin A4, and the SCL pin at analog pin A5. Other Arduinos have the I2C pins in different locations, so be sure to check that before connecting it. All you have to do is connect SDA to SDA, SCL to SCL, ground to ground, and VCC to either 5 volts or 3.3 volts. I'm connecting it to 5 volts here. Okay, now for the library. SparkFun has a great library for the BMP-180 called SFE BMP-180. This library takes care of all the math needed to adjust the pressure readings for changes in temperature. It also has functions that calculate altitude. You can download the library from GitHub at this link. Once you get that installed, you're ready to start programming. This sketch is going to output the barometric pressure and temperature to the serial monitor. Now, as with all projects that use I2C, we need to include the built-in wire library. Then we need to include the BMP180 library with hash include SFE underscore bmp180.h. Next we create a bmp180 object from the SFE bmp180 class. This will let us access all the functions in the library. In the setup section, we first initialize the serial monitor. Then we initialize the bmp180 with the begin function. The begin function downloads some calibration coefficients from the sensor that are needed for the pressure and temperature calculations. It returns a non-zero value, which gets stored in a Boolean variable called success. To check that the initialization was successful, we use an if statement with the success variable as the condition. So if the sensor successfully initializes and the begin function returns a non-zero value, the condition inside here will be true and we enter the statement and print BMP-180 in its success to the serial monitor. If the initialization fails, the success variable will hold a zero value, making this false. If that's the case, we won't get the success message and we'll know something is wrong with this sensor or the way it's connected. In the loop section, we first declare some variables. The care variable status will hold different values that control the flow of the temperature and pressure measurement process. The double variables T and P are going to hold the temperature and pressure values. Here we set the success variable to false, so that it doesn't have a true value the next time the Arduino starts up. Now we start a temperature measurement with the start temperature function. This function returns the time in milliseconds the Arduino needs to wait before receiving the temperature measurement. The sensor takes 4.5 milliseconds to measure the temperature, perform the calculations, and return a reading. So we can't get the temperature reading right away. Now we enter into a series of nested if statements that make sure that we read the sensor values in the right order and at the right time. If the start temperature function successfully notifies the sensor to start a temperature measurement, the status variable will hold a non-zero value. 
That will make this condition true. So the program will enter the first if statement. We only need to wait 4.5 milliseconds before the temperature reading is ready. But we're going to wait a full second to slow down the output and make it easier to read. So we delay 1000 milliseconds here. Now we can receive the temperature value. To do that, we use the get temperature function. This function gets the temperature reading from the sensor and passes it to the argument here. In this case, the argument is the variable t, so the temperature reading will be stored in the t variable. But the function itself returns a 1 if the temperature reading is successfully received, and a 0 if it's not. And that value will be stored in status. If the temperature reading was successfully received, the value of status will be 1, making the condition inside the next if statement true. This makes sure we get a valid temperature reading before we start the pressure measurement. Then we start a pressure measurement with the start pressure function. The argument of the function sets the oversampling rate of the sensor. Oversampling sets how precise the BMP-180's pressure measurements are. The value can be 0, 1, 2, or 3. A 0 sets it at the lowest resolution, and a 3 sets it at the highest resolution. Lower resolution means the sensor takes fewer samples, so the measurement is performed faster, but it's also less accurate. A higher resolution means it takes more samples, which takes longer, but the reading is more accurate. The start pressure function returns the number of milliseconds we need to wait before receiving the pressure value. So if the measurement was started successfully, status will hold a non-zero value, and the program will enter the next if statement. The time we need to wait before receiving the pressure measurement depends on how your oversampling is set. If your oversampling is set to the highest setting, 3, you have to wait about 26 milliseconds. But if it's set to the lowest setting, 0, you only need to wait about 5 milliseconds. We can use the delay function, with status as an argument, to delay the exact number of milliseconds we need to wait until the pressure measurement is ready to read. After that, we can receive the pressure values with the get pressure function. The get pressure function takes two arguments, p and t. The temperature value measured earlier is stored in t, which is passed to the function to perform the pressure calculations. The result of the pressure calculation is stored in the p variable. The get pressure function returns a 1 if the pressure measurement was successfully received from the sensor, and a 0 if not. So if the pressure measurement was successfully received, status will contain a 1 and the condition of the next if statement will be true. Inside the next if statement, we print the TMP variables to the serial monitor. First we print the word pressure equals with a space. Then we print the P variable on the same line. The pressure measurements are in hectopascals. So after that, we print HPA with the serial print line to end the line. Now we do the same thing with the temperature. I print the word temperature, then the T variable, then serial print line a C, since the temperature measurement is in Celsius. Okay, let's upload this and check it out. I have my BMP-180 connected to my Arduino. You can see the pressure and temperature measurements starting to come through. It's pretty amazing how sensitive the sensor is. When I lift the sensor up, you can see the pressure measurement go down. And when I lower the sensor, the pressure measurement goes up. That makes sense, since lifting the sensor higher puts less air mass above it, and results in a lower atmospheric pressure. Lowering it puts more air mass above it, so the pressure gets higher. The pressure reading here is the barometric pressure at my current altitude. We saw earlier that the barometric pressure is affected by altitude. 
This will be fine if all you want to do is measure changes in pressure. But if you're building a weather station, you'll probably want to compare the reading from the BMP-180 to pressure readings reported by different news and weather channels. But those readings might have been taken from a different altitude than yours. So we need to adjust the pressure reading to remove the effects of altitude. To do that, we can add a fixed amount of pressure to our readings to make it seem like the measurement was taken at sea level. All weather stations do this to make the barometric pressure readings from stations at different altitudes comparable. That way, you'll know a low pressure reading at one station was caused by the weather and not due to its higher altitude. The SparkFun library has a function that makes this easy. We only have to make a few changes to the original sketch. First, we declare an int variable called altitude. This will hold the altitude of your current location in meters. If you don't know your altitude, you can look it up online or use an app on your phone. The rest of the sketch remains the same. Except for the last if statement. The SparkFun library has a function called sea level that outputs an altitude compensated pressure reading. It takes two parameters, the pressure variable and the altitude variable. I'm going to store the result in a local float variable called comp for compensated. Now, instead of printing the uncompensated pressure variable P, we print the comp variable. And that's it. I won't demonstrate this sketch because my altitude is only 5 meters above sea level, so it doesn't make a big difference. But if you live at a higher elevation, it's definitely going to have an effect. In fact, a difference in altitude of only 8 meters changes the barometric pressure by 1 hectopascal. In the next video, we're going to see how to use the BMP-180's atmospheric pressure measurements to calculate your altitude. The 3-in-1 Smart Car and IoT Learning Kit from SunFounder is a hands-on, all-included electronics kit that is perfect for anyone who wants to learn how to master the Arduino. The kit comes with an Arduino, 22 different sensors and modules, breadboards, jumper wires, and everything else you need to build a bunch of fun and interesting projects. Learn about robotics by building a remote-controlled smart car that can be controlled with an infrared remote controller or drive on its own and avoid obstacles or fall on a line. Learn about the Internet of Things with a project that lets you monitor the temperature, humidity, and light level of a room from an app on your smartphone. And build a plant monitor that tracks the temperature, humidity, light intensity, and soil moisture and displays it on your smartphone so you can keep your plants watered remotely. It's a super cool kit and I had lots of fun building all the projects in it. So click the link in the description below to order the kit from SunFounder.